Cream makeup products are having a moment here in the YouTube beauty space, and now that the outside temperature is no longer set to Devil's Furnace, I thought it'd be a great time to do a tutorial using all cream makeup products. In one of my recent videos, a commenter said that they were not comfortable using cream products, and so it gave me the idea to do this tutorial. The actual products I'm using aren't really going to be the star of the show here, it's going to be the techniques, and so I'm going to use a different technique on each side of my face so that you can see if one way doesn't work for you, maybe the other way will. Well, First step is a primer. I'm going to use the Essence Prime Plus Studio Hydrating Skin Refreshing Primer. And I'm going to use a hydrating primer because I'm going to use a stick foundation, which is a little bit, hair, which tends to be a little bit stiffer. And so this will help it to glide a little bit better. Now, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but it's been a little bit since I put a video up on YouTube. I have been trying really hard to be consistent with one video a week and last week's video was I think on Tuesday and I haven't gotten anything up until this one and I'm not sure exactly how long it's going to be until this one is up but it's been an entire week since I filmed anything and the reason is I became a grandma last week. My son and daughter-in-law had their first baby. This is my first grandchild. And she was born on Friday after a kind of long and difficult labor, but everything's fine. Mom and baby are fine and they're all home and settling in. And so I've just been a little busy and have not had time to edit or film or anything because I'm just basking in being a grandma. And people said it was gonna be amazing, but oh my goodness, I could not even imagine how amazing it is. I'll probably talk more about that in a little bit, but we're going to go ahead and put some foundation on. And this is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Stick Foundation, and my color is Shell Ivory. And I thought this was going to be a little bit light for me, but full disclosure, I filmed or thought I filmed this video yesterday. Turned out it was just a practice run because about halfway through, I got a text from my son, wanted to check it, thought I hit the video on pause, checked the, check the text, came back. Oh, let me put some of this on came back and thought that I restarted it, but I guess I didn't because it wasn't there. So that's all right. Anyway, Dampen Beauty Sponge. This is how I like to apply my stick foundations. I think I actually am going to maybe do this side with a brush, but Dampen Beauty Sponge, squeeze out the excess water, squeeze it in a towel so it is just damp. And then with a stick foundation, I like to use a setting mist on my sponge because it kind of helps it to blend a little better. Now, I really shouldn't have put the other side on until I was ready to blend it, but it'll be okay. I hope. Anyway, so like I was saying, they had the baby on Friday, came home on Sunday, and it's just been amazing holding her and watching my son hold her and my daughter-in-law and to care for her. It's just... It's just pretty incredible. So I'm not sure I like this brush, the shape of it or whatever, but it's clean. So I'm going to use it and I am going to spray it as well. And we'll just see how this does. Now, if it doesn't do well, it may be the brush and not the foundation. But like I said, the foundation isn't really the point. It's just goes along with the cream theme because it's a stick. I don't. Yeah, that did okay. I think maybe the brush gave a little better coverage than the sponge, which probably removed a bit more product. So doing it that way, just to show you that you can use that, or you can actually use your fingers. It's not, it doesn't spread as easily with my fingers and I'm probably gonna wanna go in with the sponge and blend it out. I do have some dry skin on my forehead and I feel like that, oh yeah, that really emphasized it. So, if you have dry flaky skin, a sponge is going to be the better option for applying your cream products because it will have less of an exfoliating effect. A brush can kind of lift any skin flakes you might have. So for my nose, um, the other thing is before you put your stick back in the case, probably a good idea to roll it down. I always forget. Roll it down, then put it in. Okay, so I'm going to do the rest of this with my sponge because it is my preferred method. I need a little more 
movement with that foundation. So I just spray it. And what I like about this foundation is it does give good coverage, but it's also buildable. And because I've had some late nights and a little bit of time in the hospital where the air is kind of dry and my skin is in kind of bad shape, I'm going to build up just a little bit. It's kind of warm in my filming room. I just turned my fan on. I don't think you're going to be able to hear it, but in case you do, you have to hear something in the background. That's what it is. If you are also a woman of a certain age, you will understand the need for fans occasionally. All right, then we are going to go in with concealer and I'm going to use the Essence Camouflage Matte Concealer. And this is in the shade Light Ivory. And I really like this. I'm going to make sure that I blend out that foundation before I stick in. Okay. I really like this. It has a little bit of a yellow tone to it, which is kind of helpful in camouflaging dark circles. Just going to put that right on the inner portion of the eye. And then I'm going to take a fluffy brush. This is an AOA Studio F10. And I really like this brush for concealer. Um, I just use it to kind of spread it out. I don't really completely blend with it. And then I like to let it just sit for a minute. Well, maybe 30 seconds before I actually go in and blend because I think when it sets up just a tiny bit, you get a little better coverage. And then I'll just blend with my fingers. The warmth of your fingers can help meld the product with your skin, pressing it into the wrinkles and crinkles and lines. And then as a last step, here we go. There it is. I take my e.l.f. concealer sponge and just gently dab off. This is dry, by the way. I like doing this with a dry sponge. Just dab off any extra that happens to settle in the wrinkles. And then I take it to see if I have any settling in those creases that kind of fold in on themselves there. And if I do, then take a puff, straighten it out, and dab any extra out of those creases. It's excess product that is generally going to cause your concealer to look creasy. I mean, some concealers just do because they're not very good. But if you have too much product of even a good concealer, it's going to crease. Because it will settle in those lines, making them more obvious. When I'm done with this, I'm going to set the center of my face because I do have very oily skin. And even when it's not super hot, I'm still going to get oily. So, but right now we're going to leave just as it is so that we can put on these cream products. The first one I'm going to put on is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty Wand, the contour, and my shade is Fair Light. This one is one of those yucky sponge tips that gets all gross up in the top. I wish it just had a squeezy tube point. Like this blush. Why can't they just be like that? I like that so much better. It's cleaner. It's neater. You put it on your finger. Yeah, they need to be like that. I know Charlotte Tilbury did it and everybody's copying her, but sometimes just because it's expensive doesn't mean it was a good decision. Okay, so off my soapbox. This, you squeeze it up to get the product in there. This is a color that is a little bit cool, but also still has some warmth. So it's not a complete contour shade, but it's also not a complete bronzer shade. There is a difference between contour and bronzer. And we can talk about that in another video, maybe if you're interested. But for now, most of the time, I just use the same product for both. And so I'm going to take this right along the very underneath part of my cheekbone. And at first, we're going to use my sponge to blend it. And I'm just going to dab and spread. Now the sponge is going to remove some product, so you might find that you have to actually add a little bit more. You could probably also blend this with your finger, although I never have done it that way. And this, I'm just going to concentrate 
right along this area here to create a little bit of a shadow, but also a little bit of a bronzed effect. And it just kind of helps sculpt my face a little bit. So we're going on the other side. And on this side, I'm actually going to use a brush. And this brush is from Luxie. And I like it because it's kind of flat. And so when I first go in to blend, I just kind of dab along that line. And then I can pull down or press up to get it where I want it without it. If you use a, if you use a brush that's too fluffy, it can get too much spread out on your face. And then it's more likely to just look muddy. Okay, so blending with the sponge on one side, the brush on the other. I tend to like to blend these with a brush, but sponges work too. Now, if you have a, if you have more of a putty bronzer like the e.l.f., I usually just rub my finger in there and dab it on, and then I'll either take the brush to finish blending or the sponge to finish blending, but I will put it on with my fingers. Okay. For blush, I'm going to use the ColourPop, and this is At First Blush. It's a super shock cheek. That's really hard to say. I want to say like super or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, so I usually use my stippling brush, which is why it looks all pitted like that, but I'm going to put a little on with my finger on this side. So I just went in and rubbed it in and then put it on my finger. Now I have a finger that has the product on it and then I have a clean finger. And so I like to go back and forth between the product finger and the clean finger. And this is a great way to get it blended without getting too much on. If you keep using the same finger, you just keep putting more and more on. And then before you know it, you're like, you know, Corky the clown. And that's not a good look for anybody. So you can just do a really soft blush like that if you use the two finger method. But I also like to apply this with a stippling brush. This one is from Coastal Scents, which doesn't exist anymore, but it's I really like it and I wish I could still get it. Elf also makes a domed stippling brush and this one works pretty good for this as well. I've used it for a powder, so I'm not gonna use it today. It's not clean. And by the way, my brushes are not clean. Normally, if I'm doing a review video, I will make sure that all of my brushes are clean because I don't want the products to be influenced or confounded by what's on my brushes. But today, I'm just doing techniques, and generally, my brushes aren't clean. Not all of them, not all at the same time. And so it was either film the video imperfectly with unclean brushes or not film still not have clean brushes and not have a video to put up. So I chose imperfection and you can see you get a very similar effect. It's just a matter of what you like and what works best for you. For highlighter, I really like this Focalure face highlighter. This came in a duo. It was an Amazon product and I will have everything that's on my face listed down below. If I have links, I will link them as well. If they're Amazon links, they will be affiliate links. You are, of course, under no obligation to shop those links. But if you do, I get a very small commission and I appreciate it very much. So this is a great highlighter because it has shimmer and glow and absolutely no glitter. It's very smooth. It's not super intense. It just gives a really pretty glow. And I don't find that it, it accentuates texture or imperfections. And this one, I do actually prefer to use my finger. I don't know that I've ever used a brush for it, but I will come back after I get it blended and use my sponge to finish the blend. So I just take a side of my sponge. Sometimes I'll use the end that had the foundation on it. Sometimes I won't, doesn't really matter and just blend all those edges together. And one thing about using cream products is you tend to keep this really pretty fresh faced glow. And that's my complexion. I can still see my skin through it. I can still see some of my imperfections, but it's blended and blurred a little bit. And I just think it looks really nice. All right, so before I do eyes, I'm gonna do brows. And in keeping with the spirit of the cream products, I'm going to use a brow pomade. This one is from LA Girl. And the color is soft brown. I don't typically use a brow pomade simply because pencils are so fast for me, but we're going to go ahead and brush these brows up. 
one thing I do when I use a pomade is go in and get some on the brush and then I use my palette and brush just a little bit off just to make sure that that first stroke I don't get a huge blob and then I kind of start in the middle and feather my way down and then back again just depositing the color where I feel like I can spread it better than if I just get it all like right here or all in the tail. And as you need more, just go back in and then I, do, I dab off every time. With a thin brow brush like that, you can draw those individual hair strokes. Not sure why, but I've been having a hard time getting brow product to stick right there. I don't know what's going on. It hasn't been always, it's just been recently. And uh, if anybody's had that problem and you know what's going on there, let me know. It just doesn't want to stick. And then I have a little bit of a darker hyperpigmentation area right there. And so it always ends up looking darker right there. Brows are, brows are just weird. So anyway, my grandbaby. Um, <laughs> I'm going to take this spoolie again and just kind of brush that through. Yeah, she is just, she was teeny tiny, uh, 5 pounds, 12 ounces. And my smallest child was 6 pounds, 10 ounces. So I've, I don't know that I've ever held a baby this small. And she just literally looks like... A china doll she's so petite and so and she's just so pretty and so anyway i am loving the grandma gig and everybody who said it was going to be wonderful is absolutely right so um i'm going to do this other eyebrow and eyebrows are boring so i'm not going to subject you to it i'll be right back <laughs> i should have showed you that one instead of the first one it went so much quicker i don't know what it is about putting on makeup that makes my nose itch but it does every single time do you guys have that trouble all right, so let's go to eyes. I am going to prime with the Milani eyeshadow primer. This is not my favorite eyeshadow primer. In fact, I don't really like it very much at all, but I have it, so I'm going to use it. And the reason I don't like it is because it does not do anything for covering discoloration, redness, veins, etc. on the eye. And I want that from an eyeshadow primer. I'm just going to use a blending brush here to kind of finish the blend because I like having a smooth base to start from. The other thing I don't like about this eyeshadow primer, and it's not the only one that does this, but if I get it on my concealer, then it can make the conceal make an area that looks like, I don't know, patchy, bumpy, just weird. It, it makes weirdness happen. And so I have to be really careful not to get it where I have concealer. And I'm usually not that careful, so. All right, I had to go help my daughter with some school. I've come back. I have hit the record button. The timer is moving. So I should not have the same issue that I had yesterday of only recording. I think I recorded up to this point and again got distracted and then had nothing of the eyes. So I've got the eyeshadow primer on and I'm going to be using four different eye crayons today. I have the e.l.f. Mint Melt and I don't know what color this is because they have black writing on a brown base. I can't read that. I'll put it down here on the screen after I figure it out. I have a Kiko Milano eyeshadow stick. And this one is in 05. It's a darker shimmer. I have a Sigma in Bubbly. And it's a kind of a rose gold shimmer. And then for the inner corner, I'm going to use this e.l.f. No Budge shadow stick. And this one is in Perfect Pearl. And look at that. It's black writing on silver and I can read it. And these are both e.l.f. So... You know, it's just a pet peeve of mine and it seems like a silly thing, but as you get older and your eyes aren't as good, trying to read packaging is very frustrating. So we're gonna take this darkest color here and I'm gonna put this out in the outer corner and I'm just gonna put some on and then I'm going to take a flat shader brush so that I can manipulate this and move it where I want it. Now, if you're afraid of getting too much, I'm going to show you on the other eye how you can 
go in a little lighter at first because this does dry very quickly and it doesn't give you a lot of time to move it where you want it. So you could end up drawing it on there and end up with a mess. I am going to take a little bit of setting spray on my brush. I just sprayed it on my palette to kind of dampen that shadow to help me manipulate it a little bit. And that's a little trick you can use if your cream product has dried and you still need to move it around. You can also always use your fingers. Okay. On the other eye, I'm going to, I'm actually going to take some of this on my brush and not draw it directly on my eye, but use the brush to help with not getting quite so much put down in one place and having to move it around. And I'm using the brush to shape that outer corner there. If you see I have a little bit of shimmer mixed in there, it's because I'm using the same brushes I used yesterday. Okay. I don't have a shade that would be really good for a transition shade for me because I just don't have one. And so I needed to use this dark color, but make it work for a transition shade. And that's how I figured out how to do it. Okay. Now, because I love shimmer, I am going to take the Kiko Milano and just draw that right on the eye in the outer third. Such a pretty color. And just use my ring finger to tap it in. I don't really want to necessarily blend this because I don't want to lose the shimmer. And if you have, like I do, crinkly eyes, you can, if you don't want to take your makeup off, lift that eyebrow to straighten out the lid to help you blend. And just pat, pat, pat like that. But again, if you don't like using your fingers, I'm going to take that brush, same one, I just wiped it off, and go over the top. and paint it on with the brush instead of my finger. Still going to be helpful to straighten out that eye. You might not get quite as much impact using the brush as you do using your finger, and that may be a strategy that you wish to employ because you don't want it to be quite as in your face. Okay, I'm going to dry, I'm gonna wipe that off because I wanna use it for a lighter color without getting the dark color in the light. Stepping further down the lightness scale, the Sigma in bubbly. I'm going to just paint that right there. And tap. And I'm just tapping to spread, not really to blend. I feel like I kind of lost a lot of that when I spread it. We go. Now, if you have crinkly eyelids, you may find that after you've done this, you've gotten a little bit of creasing, but you can still go in and tap them out and then they should be okay. Okay, so I'm going to take some of this on this brush and put that on the inner portion and blend it into the darker color. Okay, I actually like the way that worked with the brush better than my finger on this with the stick. And you may find that the different sticks need to use a different application method. So if one doesn't work, try something else. Then we have the Elf in Perfect Pearl. Perfect Pearl, is that what it was? Yeah. And I'm just going to use that right here on the inner corner to brighten that up. And I'm not going to blend that at all. Now, if you want, you can use this as an eyeliner. Um, you can just kind of pull a little in under here and then drag that. I don't typically like to get that dark under my eye, but I just wanted to show you how you could use it for that. You could also 
pull it out and do a little bit of an uplift wing kind of situation. Okay, actually, I wasn't going to do that, but I really like it. And then, and then I'm going to use the perfect pearl. And I often do this with an eyeliner, but I'm just going to use that to line the lower waterline because I really like that brightening effect of having a bright shimmer on the lower waterline. For my upper waterline, I'm going to use the Essence. I think this is the long lasting eye pencil in hot chocolate. And I'm going to tight line. I'll speed it up. I'm going to curl my eyelashes, put on mascara, and I'll be right back. I used two coats of the Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effect on the top lashes and one coat on the bottom. And this tube is like at its perfect consistency right now. Of course, it's almost gone, but I mean, it just goes on and gives me these wow lashes. Really happy with it. I'm going to put on my lip and then I'm going to check and see if I need to add a little bit more. I feel like I'm a little light on blush, but we'll put on the lip first. This is a ColourPop lippy pencil and the color is good and plenty. I like this a lot. It's a really nice cool toned mauve. If I didn't try to talk while I was putting on a lip pencil, I could probably do it a lot faster. And maybe neater. Maybe not though. I still make a mess. And then I'm going to use the Elf Satin O Face Lipstick. This one is in Effortless. It goes really well with this ColourPop lip pencil. And because my eyes are kind of cool and a little bit pink toned, I think that goes really well with my eye look. What do you think? I do want to check and see if I have any creasing on my eyelids. I don't have creasing, but I do have a couple of mascara dots. So let me flick those away. Actually on this eye, the Sigma got a little creasy right there. So I'm just going to dab that out. And I think it'll be fine. Like I said, I did this yesterday and I had a little bit of creasing but when I tapped it out, then it didn't do that again the rest of the day. So it did last really well. Okay, I do feel like I want just a little bit more blush. And so I'm going to go in with my finger and I'm just going to tap it right here on the front. I've seen this being done a little bit more with the blush, just like on the fronts of the cheeks. And I think it's so pretty. And then because I don't want to look like a clown... I am going to take my sponge and just dab that a little bit so that it's not quite so in your face. Yes, I think that looks a little bit more balanced. And then, as I said, I do want to set the center of my face. I'm going to use the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder and just put a little in the lid. Grab my puff, tap it in and brush and kind of tap it off a little bit and then just press where I want to be mattified a little bit. And then I just kind of press, 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 press until it's all pressed into my skin. And this will help me not to get oily looking through the day. And then I'll just look up here. But I want to leave that glow on my cheeks because I think that that gives just a freshness to the face. So setting the center keeps me from being an oil slick, but leaving the sides keeps the freshness. And I thought I might use a gloss because I really like using glosses, but I kind of like the way it looks without it. So I think I'll leave it. If you're new here, I hope that this was enjoyable to you and that you would like to stick around and see what else I offer. I'm going to put some videos up on the screen at the end. You can pick one of those or go over to my channel page and scroll for a little bit and see if there's anything there that piques your interest. If there is, then I invite you to hit that subscribe button and turn those notifications on, set them to all so you won't miss any time I upload a new video. If you're one of my subscribers long time, you keep coming back or you're not subscribed and you just keep coming back anyway. I appreciate all of you who come back and watch my videos. I really enjoy this but it's a whole lot more fun knowing that there's people out there watching. Just take one second and give me a like if you would, I'd appreciate it. And if you're a grandma, drop me a flower emoji in the comments for each of your grandchildren. And if you're a great grandma, then 
find like a baby emoji or something and put one of those for each of your great grandchildren. I want to see how many other grandmas we have out here because now I'm part of the grandma club <laughs> and I'm so happy to be here. I hope that you all have a beautiful, blessed day and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. And this is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Studio. No. Wet n Wild Photo Focus. And this. Because like I said, I did this look yesterday and I had that little bit of... Okay, I'm a gnat. <laughs>